Hi, hon. Can you hear me okay? Hey, Marianne, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Uh oh. Hello? Hey, Marianne, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You can't hear me? Okay. Um, let me see if I can fix this. One, two, one, two, no. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Does any, do you hear me? Thumbs up, thumbs down. No, nothing, it's still? Huh. Okay. This is really weird. Are you there, Dana? I am. Can okay, we have no picture, but we, now we have voice. Yes. Okay. Woo. <laughs> I bought a brand new phone um, just the other day because I completely destroyed mine. And so I am still getting things uploaded and all the glitches worked out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nothing worse than change. Especially on something like that. Yeah. I mean, I'm really excited for it. It's, it's I, I had my phone forever. It was a Pixel, um, a Pixel 2 XL. Oh. And uh, yeah, so I'm like so excited to have the Pixel 6 Pro because um, the other one I had forever. And I love that phone. I, I don't want to get rid of it, but it's time to upgrade. Because yeah. they're not supporting like, it it's, anymore. It's just like with those people who had Blackberries. Remember the Blackberries? People oh, hated man. giving up those things. They just loved them. I forgot about Blackberries. <laughs> Such yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I had a Blackberry as my first phone. Nice. I, you know, my first phone actually was a little tiny, like this big Nokia that 
um, still actually turns on. Those things are hardcore. <laughs> but I remember the blackberries were so intense with their little, I, I could never type on those things. So hard. <laughs> yeah, you have to do little nails. Um, so let's, let's see, I, I need to check the clock. We're not, we're not, I haven't been in the office a lot lately, so the clock is still <laughs> so we'll give everybody a minute to get in. As you can see, I'm in my office. It's been one crazy week. I um, bet. Bet. We have the NDI red dance residency in the schools this week. So yeah, it's it's something else. Um, they they are doing amazing job, but it is so intense. Uh, you know, we go to every every school um, in Socorro and, and then after school, what's that? Oh, we're not on mute, what's And then after school, we end up doing the advanced teams. So we're there till about six o'clock and it's just been so intense that, oof, but it's gonna look great. It's gonna look great. So if, you, if you're curious or interested, Tune in on Thursday night at six o'clock. Um, the link will be uh, on our website uh, where mo I'm sure most of you went to find this link. And um, yeah, watch the kids, cheer them on. They, wow. they're, they're doing incredible. I, I mean, to, to go from one week of virtual <clears throat> training where the picture freezes every, you know, every 10 minutes and, and then to one week of intense live training and they get the whole dance and they've got their dance down and, and some of them have more than one dance. It's incredible. The wow. things that they can do. I'm, you know, I wish my memory was that good. <laughs> Just not that, that anymore. Okay. And if you see my hand, I apologize. Like I said, this is a brand new phone so I and and I basically <clears throat> not see where the camera is <laughs> like up in the corner somewhere but the screen's black and everything's like black but yeah so I think we'll give it another two minutes and then we'll start okay So are we doing it? Are we we are we painting these lengthwise or landscape? Um, we're going to do it portrait. Portrait, okay. Yeah, we're going to do it portrait this time. Okay, little change. I mean, you can do it landscape. It's up to you. If you have a wall that um, a landscape picture is going to fit best on, by all means, do it landscape. Well, I sure got a lot of compliments on the cat. People really like cats. Yeah. Yes. I love my cat. I mean, it was like the cutest little thing. I was so happy with the cat. It, it really turned out great. And yeah, all of them yeah. were so awesome. Uh, I, they, we had, uh, that was just such a fun one. Yeah. It really was. And um, I loved all of the pictures. Oh my God. I mean, I, I love, you know, some people put the spider right here. Some, but somebody did a tree. I was, I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I love them. They're so cute. Yeah. I'm, we should I'm, just lay those somewhere. We should. We should have some kind of art display. Um, I, you know, we'll we'll talk we'll talk to Gloria and, and them about it and maybe one of these days we'll do that. Because we did do that once upon a time. Um, our very first canvas and cocktails, I don't even know how long ago it was, uh, four years ago, maybe. I the years just roll in, roll into one with me. But um, we had, we had, uh, I think it was uh, one of the, the community ed instructors came and she taught um, and she, she, she did a canvas and cocktails for us in the upper lobby of Macy Center. And then we kept everybody's paintings and displayed them on the walls uh, for, you know, I think it was just like two or three weeks. And then everybody came and grabbed them. So um, maybe we'll, in the spring, we'll do a live um, in-person 
event and do something like that because that would be really That'd fun. Be fun. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> welcome everyone uh, to Dana's Delights presented by the New Mexico Tech Performing Arts Series. Um, you can tell I'm in my office. Uh, it's been a crazy week. So um, instead of going home and getting set up, I just said, I'm going to do it here. And um, yeah, it's these are really fun uh, just activities that you can do at home, online. Uh, you, a lot of people like to get together um, as a group and uh, have fun with that. And um, if you are ever interested, you can go to our website, nmt.edu slash PAS. Uh, we have uh, the schedule there. Usually we'll post um, just the upcoming month. Forgive me if it's not on there because uh, things get a little crazy around here. But we have a lot of fun with it. We have uh, paint packets for people who don't uh, keep paint with them that much. Um, and actually, I'm looking for mine right now. And now that I realize it, I don't have it. But um, join us every month. It's a blast. And it's a really good way to unwind. And um, yeah. While I'm doing this, if you haven't gotten your water, uh, you'll need a cup of water to wash out your brushes with and some paper towels. Uh, make sure to grab those. And I'm going to grab my paints because they're on the other desk. So I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if you got the paint packet, you'll see that there's a plate for you to mix paints with. You've got Optical stick to mix your paints with so that way you don't get anything too messy. You'll have lots of fun paints. This time around, we're definitely going to be mixing some stuff. So if you feel like you don't want to get your area too dirty, make sure to cover it. The best thing about acrylics is that they're very, very forgiving. You can wash them off with soap and water. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about them staining or, uh, you know, just messing up your, your countertop or table, wherever you're painting at. You should also have a good size large brush, um, medium brush, and a small little detail brush. And for those of us that have extra supplies, if you have extra supplies, feel free to use them. Um, this is all in good fun. You don't have to stick with the brushes that we use. You can have your own brushes, whatever you've got, use it. And we're gonna get started. So the painting that is planned, and I don't know if you guys can see that too good, it's a little far away, has a very sunset motif. It's, it's very dramatic. Um, like I've always said, if you want a different color background, go for it. You know, if, if, you, if you want to display this and it's an orange is not going to work with the room, do whatever color you want. Um, that it's it's your painting. It's your it's going to be displayed in your room, so you make it work for you. And they come out gorgeous every time. Uh, we've had so many different colors going on, so it's really they're really awesome. Okay, so let's come in here, and we are going to start with our background um, as soon as I can get this tripod to work. Like I said, I'm in my office. I typically do this from home, so everything's a little different. And I think, yeah. 
Okay. So for my background, I'm going to stick with what we have on the screen and what we intended to do. First things first, what I'm going to do is find the spot where I want to have that sunset kind of look going on. And I'm going to take my white and put make a little nice little circle in that area. You might not be able to see this on the screen, but I've got my white. I'm just going to make a nice little circle. And it's gonna be, I'm not gonna really, really go crazy with blending it in and making sure it's dry. So you see it's a little drippy, if you can see that. And that's okay, cause that is the plan. So that's where my sun is going to be. And I am not going to clean my brush off. Uh, a lot of these I tend to do with saturated brushes because it gives you a really awesome gradient kind of look going on there. So you see here, I've got some yellow and you can see that I've always, I still have white on my brush. That is perfectly okay. Now, if you wanted something that is a little more precise, so you could definitely um, brush, uh, clean your brush off and, and just do a circle and a circle and a circle. It'll give you a totally different look. It looks really cool as well. But for us, we are going to blend. So I am just going around that white that I put in there. And I'm just making a nice circle around my white. Okay. We're gonna blend this all in a little bit, but we're just putting our colors down right now. So they are a little kind of, um, messy. Looks a little messy right now. Don't worry about it, because we're going to blend. Blend, 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 blend. I'm gonna grab my orange. And of course, I'm not cleaning my brush. My brush still has the yellow on it. So right now I have white, yellow, and orange. And I'm just going to go around my yellow circle. Okay. And then for the red. Now the red for me, I'm just going to use a tiny bit. Red is pretty intense, so you don't need a lot. So just got tiny, tiny tip of red. And I'm just going to go on the outside and just go around. You can see my colors are already kind of starting to blend. So that is our starting point. Now I'm going to bring the red color out a little bit further. And I'm just going to use whatever's on my brush that kind of dry brush look. And then I want a little more orange. So I'm going to add a little orange and I'm gonna grab a little bit of red. So just kind of Framing that sun, a setting sun. If you have any questions, please let me know.
Okay. So we've got this kind of base going on here for our background. Now I'm going to wash off my brush. If you have another brush that you want to use, feel free. Let me grab these and put them on the side. So I'm just going to pat this brush a little bit to make sure I get more of the color off. Then I'm going to dip it in the water again. And it's, I'm going to leave it a little wet. So my brush is a little wet, doesn't have any paint on it. It's just not so wet that it's dripping down the brush, but wet enough. And now I'm going to start with my white circle. And I'm just going to kind of blend things together. So those colors are going to get mixed up. And if you want to keep that white, 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 once you start hitting that red and orange, you can wash off your brush a little more so you don't get that in there. And it's getting this kind of cool strokey look too. For those of you that are new, I don't use technical terms. Um, you'll hear smush and stroke a lot. Just FYI. So I'm just blending those colors together. Um, for me, this is looking a little pink, so I'm gonna add a little more orange. to my red and get that kind of blood orange thing going on here because I like that color. And so you can keep playing with it. Mix, it, mix up your colors, have a little fun with it. You can add some yellows. You could even add a little bit of purple or blue. You know, it, it is a sunset and here in New Mexico, we know sunsets. We, we, we are the authority on beautiful sunsets. So just keep blending, keep mixing until you feel comfortable with it. Until you get it where you like it. And I'm doing long circular strokes. So that way I get these kind of brush strokes that go around and have that radiating feel to them. Because I plan to leave those in. Um, you can smooth it and smooth it as best you, you want, but I, I really like the way that looks. I think I'm pretty happy with that right now. So I'm going to stop. <laughs> so because I, I can get out of hand with things and just keep going, going, going. So I'm stopping there. And this is our sunset background. Right? And then we're going to have a darker background towards the bottom. That's going to be, excuse me. It's going to be our water reflecting. And for that, I'm going to take my red I'm using the same colors you guys are. So. Yeah. Unpackage them as well. Then I take my red and I'm going to add a little bit of black and make a little a darker red, just something a little more intense. 
than the red that we have right here. Like a burgundy. So I'm dipping my red. I have a red plate, so. <laughs> and I just tapped my, my brush into the black. I'm not gonna use a lot of black because that'll really, really make it dark. If it gets too dark, you can always add some more red. And so I've got this nice dark mauve kind of color going on here. And I'm going to, I'm gonna see all my, there you go. I'm going to go just halfway. So I'm not, and I've already I've already sketched this out just so I have a quick reference, but I'm just gonna go halfway on my canvas. I'm not I'm not gonna go all the way across with this color. So I'm gonna start down here. And that's just because it makes it easier. We got some light colors that are gonna go into that barrel. So I don't wanna get too Too crazy with the dark on that side. So you can see it's it this almost looks brown, but it's got some burgundy in it. So I got that red and I mixed it with the black. I'm gonna wash my brush off just a little bit and get some of that out of off of my brush. Because I want a nice gradient. And that black is really intense. So I'm just gonna dip into my red and I'm going to go on top of that and just kind of blend those two things together. Cause it's just, it's just the water reflecting the sunset. So you've got those deep colors. We can even add a little bit of orange to that bottom if you want to. Just get a little more paper towel. And I'm gonna dip into my orange and putting it right on top of the color that I just laid down. So that way it pulls all those colors in. So you see that orange is a lot darker and more intense than the sunset. And I'll go down all the way down and come back up and just kind of pull those dark colors in all the way to the top. So if you go start, go back down to the bottom and just brush side to side all the way up. You'll get those colors on your brush and you can bring them on all the way up. And you see it in there? And later on, we'll go in and we will add some details to that. So since I have this color on my brush right now, this kind of dark color, I'm actually wanting to put a little bit more of that color up in my corner, right around the side just to make the sunset a tiny bit more intense, more dramatic. So I'm just gonna kind of like lightly brush. I 
See how I got that there. So now that I got that dark color in there a little bit, I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm just going, I'm gonna wet my brush, dab it off. This brush has a lot more water than what I'm used to. Dip it back in really lightly just to get a little bit of water on there. <laughs> and just go over that to kind of soften it up. So that way it's not so harsh. And get that color pulled into my sunset. That's what I'm looking for. That soft, intense color. Add a little bit of orange. It's a very subtle thing to do, but it's working for me. So I'm rolling with it. Okay. So let me know. I'm gonna give everybody a few minutes. Kinda get your whole pattern down. These are not my typical brushes. <laughs> so, um, um we're, we're, yeah, I'm working with what I got. They're not bad, but you get used to a certain kind of brush that you work with. These are more natural than, than the nylon I usually use. So I'll give you guys a few minutes. And then we'll move on to our barrel. All right, so we're gonna get our barrel done. And first thing I wanna do is outline. Um, that's gonna be easy, easiest for people who have not really done painting that much before. Um, it actually turns your canvas into kind of like a coloring page, which is really, really helpful. Um, it makes it so fast and easy. So. We are going to start, I'm going to take my um, medium flat brush. There you go, there's the camera. <laughs> and I'm just going to dip it in my black. Just the tip. Um, I don't want a lot on there. It's just gonna, it's, it's gonna be like my makeshift pencil right now. So for my barrel, I want to make the top of the barrel. So I'm just gonna find the middle point, kind of where, where you stopped your water. And I'm just going to go right across. So best trick to get that nice straight line Ish, is make sure your pinky finger is nice and clean. You put that pinky finger on the canvas and it'll keep your hand steady. So right under that line, I'm going to make another line that's just parallel. It's a little bit longer, not much, just a little bit longer. And I'm gonna take that one all the way across too. Just like that.
And so once you've got your two lines right there, like I said, this one is just a tad longer. And the reason for that is, of course, because a barrel is round. So we're going, we're going to kind of follow this line and connect it and head all the way down to the bottom. So grab a little more black. And you're going to put your brush, pinky, remember? Pinky helps keep you steady. We're gonna put the brush right on that line and connect those two lines. From there, we're going to take that line and drag it all the way down. So you just got three lines right there. Easy peasy. You'll notice that I've got some paint in the barrel area. Don't worry, that's fine, not a biggie. We're gonna cover it up. Now we have to have a brace on the barrel, of course. Hold all the wood together. So we're gonna take our brush and we're going to do a couple more parallel lines. So this can be a little bit higher up. It could be right across the middle, wherever you wanna put it is perfectly fine. I put mine about a quarter way down. That's where I started my first line. So that's where, that's where my barrel will be. I'm gonna take my thumb and kind of eyeball it. And where my thumb is, I'm going to make the second line. So that'll be the iron brace that holds the barrel together. Now I'm just going to fill this in right now. And actually, so you see right where they connect, I'm going to take my line out just a little bit. You got a question? Mm -mm. Okay. So that way I get like a little bump and it looks like the iron's just kind of on top of my barrel. There you go. Just like that. And I'm just going to fill this all in with black. <laughs> I've got a lot of white noise going on over here. The heaters are on and the computers are worrying. So I might start getting a little drowsy. <laughs> Definitely an activity that I need for tonight. Things have been so hectic and crazy this week. Nice to have a little bit of paint. Fun. Okay, I'm not going to paint this top one just yet. Um, if you've already started, that's okay. But I'm going to leave this one alone for now. 
because um, I have the grapes that I'm going to be putting um, hanging over this edge. And you can use color over black, which we're going to do here to make our little rivets. But I just don't want to have to really fight with the black to do that. So we're going to wait on that for just a little bit. So I've got my barrel and it's got the brace on it. Next thing I'm going to do is make some slats. So I'm going to take my black again. And I'm just going to kind of put a line in here and there that kind of represent, they're gonna curve a little bit because the wood is bowed. Because of course it's a barrel. And these can be random. You can do them all the way up and down, you know, to make a full board. You can do it like that. You can just do it to highlight where you think the board would end up being. If you wanted, you could take it and put a knot, you know, like a wooden knot. Um, any, anything you can think of. Wood is so beautiful. It's got such amazing grain and patterns in it that this could get really intense. <laughs> I, I, did, I did my floor in, in a faux wood pattern one time and, and it's, you get, you get kind of overwhelmed with, with all the different choices you can do, so. At first, you want to keep it minimal, that's fine. We can just do a little bit here and there. You're good. Yeah, and then we can build on it. So now I want to color my barrel in. And to do that, I know most of you got brown in your packet. You can have a dark wood barrel, it's like a smoky wood barrel. You can go light. Uh, you know, you can, you can go gray, you can, you, you know, you can, can have a um, driftwood barrel, Wh whatever color you want. You know, like I said, wood is so versatile. So I am going, I'm going to get my brown and I'm actually going to lighten it because I want a light colored barrel, kind of like what we've got going on in the picture. So I'm gonna get a little bit of brown, not too much, because it is a strong color. Gray would be a good color to add too. Yeah, oh yeah. We, and, and you can add all kinds, you know, wood is, has such beautiful grain. There's so many different colors in it. You could just have fun with it. So I'm going, I'm mixing myself some lighter, lighter brown here. And I think I might even go lighter than that. I'm gonna add a little more white. So you just mix the brown With some white if you want a darker brown if you've got one of the lighter browns so you've got a, a, a tan or um because i know we we had a mix of colors you can you can go lighter um you can go darker you can add some red to make a cherry wood you know i, I mean there's so many options <clears throat> oh, excuse me. and i think i think i'm not going to mix it too much because i'm i'm getting some really pretty swirls in here and that's kind of what I want. Like that. that cool option. So I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm just gonna wet it a little bit. I want this to start out as a wash since I've already put those lines in there. 
So I'm just going to pull this down. And I'm going straight over my black lines that I made. So that way they kind of peek through. And if I want to go back and intensify them, I can. But I like how they kind of blend into the background and make, make it look a little more subtle. And I'm using long strokes. I'm going from the top to the bottom. You do that. And I might even go lighter than this. Now that I'm looking at it on the canvas, I think I might scrape some off here and go a little later. So I'm using my brush right now, kind of like a, a, a scrape, like a spatula knife. Just kind of scraping the paint off that I've already put on to lighten that up. You see how much lighter that's getting? Just like that. And I'm gonna cover this part. So if you've got a little bit of overlap like I have right here with my water, don't worry about it. We're going to shade this area so it's going to have a little shadow. And that overlap is actually going to kind of help. It'll help you guide. It'll help guide you to go. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing dry brush with this because I want to I want to see those brush strokes and all that unevenness. I think I think that lends to the the wood aspect. So like some areas I'm leaving dark and I'm actually going to add some white here and there, lighten this up. There's just so many options. And add some dark, so a little bit more brown, darker brown. If you add a little bit of red to your brown, you're gonna get some really cool colors in there too. like that. So just keep on working on your barrel. And if you go over your black, don't worry about it. We can go back, touch that up. Not a problem. Acrylics are so forgiving. And I'm going to add some white strokes in here. Give it a few highlights. See how that's coming out.
can even add a little bit of dark strokes in there. Take my burgundy. It's picking up the colors from the sunset. They're kind of reflecting. Now I'm gonna take some of my brown while I'm at it, add a tiny bit of black, get a nice dark brown going on there. I'm just gonna kind of shade this area. I'm just tapping, 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 just tapping my brush. Just kind of stippling that, making a little shadow. You can take your finger, you can cut, just kind of smudge that paint. Oh, I don't know why. And give it a nice little shadow across that side. Hey, <clears throat> so give everybody just a minute. Thank <clears throat> you. Let me know if the breaks are a little too long or if they're not long enough. Because we're good. I don't I don't mind just chilling out here with you guys. We don't mind you chilling out with us either. We're glad to have you. This is a long week. It's a really nice, it's a nice night. It's nice to chill a little bit. <laughs> Yes. All right. So now I want to start putting in my grapes. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw it out. Um, trace it out basically. So I'm going to take my little tiny brush and I'm going to start right at the bottom and work my way up. So towards the, towards this, the bottom rung of my barrel, I'm going to add a little circle. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It can be a wonky circle. Be a nice round, juicy grape or tiny little ones, whatever, whatever kind of grapes you like, that's what you want to do. And so I'm just going to make circles. Dana, you know, what color? What color are you using? I am using black right now. Black. Okay. 
yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm using black to trace everything out basically. And then we'll go in and fill it in just like a coloring book. Okay. It's nice and simple and fun. And it doesn't make us work too hard. <laughs> So anytime my grapes are not touching, I'm just going to make a little line. So that way I have a stem that connects them. So we're connecting them with stems if they're not touching. And we're going to shade it in and everything. Um, so you might eventually lose your stem, but for now, they're connected by stem. Remember, change the size, change the shape. Give yourself a variety. So some of them, sometimes you can go and do like a half moon circle just like that. And that's going to give the appearance that that grape is behind the other grapes. So it'll give you a little bit of perspective. So I'm just filling in. I'm just making circles, circle, circle, circle. Sometimes the circles are behind the other circles. Sometimes they're right up front. But just make yourself a bunch of circles. Now, once you feel like your bunch of grapes is big enough, you can stop. If you want to go all the way up, you can do that too. Do lots and lots of grapes. I'm going to add a stem over here and kind of have one grape sticking out all by its lonesome. You know, those kind of funky grapes that nobody actually wants to eat like the last grape in the, in the bunch. I do that a couple times. These little tiny grapes that just kind of hang out there. They hang out there all by their lonesome. And I think that's as many grapes as I want to go. I guess that I better stop. <laughs> I start I start going overboard. So I'm gonna stop myself while I'm ahead. Once you get your grapes done, and then like I said, we're just we're just doing the outlines right now. So these are just little circle grapes. And let me see if I can put this closer. That, that helps. Okay. So now that I have my grapes done, I'm going to add my leaves. And for those of you that haven't done this much, don't freak out. Leaves are really, really easy. So for my leaf, first thing I'm going to do is find where I want to put it, right? I want, I want to kind of put it right here behind my grapes and I'm just going to make a line. 
and the slide's just going to go on and I'm going to stop. Once I have this nice little S curve going, I'm going to stop. Okay. And then I'm going to add another one that's kind of droopy to the side. They don't have to be perfect. So I made three lines and they're just kind of curved out, a little wonky, and that's what you want. So at the top of my little curve, I'm basically going to give it a little umbrella. So he's just got a little umbrella. There, I'm going to pull it down. Just a little bit. And then we're going to jut it back out. And then we'll do another kind of umbrella curve. And another one. And the final one. And the final one's going to kind of disappear behind your grapes if you have it in the same general area that I do. So as soon as I get to a grape, I'm just going to stop. I'll do that to the other side as well. And if you're like me, you're going off your canvas. That's perfectly fine. I'm just going to put those little valleys in just to make it look like things are still going on, even though we can't see them. And there you've got your first leaf. You can put as many leaves in there as you want. Again, like I said, if you're painting, you can use this type of leaf. You can make it a different kind of leaf, whatever you feel like. It's all good. So my next leaf is going to be up here a little more. And I'm going to use that same S curve. Oh. Of course, grapes are on a vine. They climb. And I'm going to come out. And out. So I'm gonna put like these little hat umbrella things over these ones. And if you can tell, I'm making mine a little more pointed at the top. And they kind of look like arrows almost. Actually, they look exactly like arrows. Now that, I, now that I look back at the, at the stream, I was like, oh, they do look like arrows. All right. And then I'm just going to connect them. And you can add as many points as you want between, between each leaf. Each point of your leaf, I should say. And so from here, I'm actually going to just kind of bring this down a couple times and brush it off the canvas 
to kind of give it a different look. This one looks like, yep. Like I said, your leaves can look however you want. They don't have to be perfect. We're being artistic. And I'm gonna add one more leaf right here. Um, you could, I, I, I'm playing, I, I was toying with the idea, but uh, I'm going to do another leaf. But you, you could totally put a wine glass right here or a wine bottle. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, just we're, we're talking, we're talking fall, we're talking wine. You know, I mean, you could totally, yeah, you could totally put a glass right there. I think, I think that would be really cool. Um, you could do a kitty. What, you know, I mean, this, this area is, totally up for grabs but i'm gonna I, I'm, I'm gonna stick with with the original and put another leaf so i'm just doing my s curve again And this leaf, I'm kind of making go that way a little bit. And the way I'm doing that is the tips, I'm just curving to the side a little bit. So that the point is a little more in the direction of the sun. And again, if you're posting, just make sure that your hand is not got paint on it. It's a mistake that we all make, but it gets bothersome to clean up. All right. That one is kind of heading into my barrel. And I think because I have that right there, I'm going to add a few more grapes to kind of pull that cool. into my pattern. Again, stop me if I'm going too fast or if you have any questions. And of course, the grapes. So we have to do some curly cute grape vines. I mean, we just have to. Oh, so with your brush, um, you can very gently kind of whirl things around and make some curly cues coming out of your out of your barrel there. And 
have to have a nice light touch for those um, and not too much paint on your brush. If you need to, wash your brush off and uh, squeeze it really, really good so you can get that shape back. I know these are kind of soft, but you've got, got some fun little curly cues that we can make come out of our barrel here. Let me, I have moved this up just a little bit. from behind my my leaf and then go around and around and I drag it out and I'll do that a little bit on the bottom too I got this one kind of coming down here. That up. You can add another one going down this way. Needs to be bursting with vines. All right. I'll give everybody just a minute. Awesome. So now we get to paint our leaves and our grapes. Oh. So I'm going to stick with this burgundy color that we've got going on. Um, I've got wine on the brain right now, so <laughs> I'm gonna, um, my, mine are gonna be red wine grapes. Uh, you can change the color of the grapes, whatever color you want. But I'm going to mix a little bit of red. and a tiny bit of blue. And if you got our packet, save your lids because you got a lot of paint. You should be good. You could probably use it for two more paintings, um, which is totally awesome. And they do, they keep. I've had some at home for a good long while. I'm making a purple, but it's gonna be a little more towards a red, like a, like a violet. So just used a little bit of blue and a decent amount of red. I'm probably, I'm definitely gonna need more than that, but. That's a good start. I'm going to grab my brush, make sure it's cleaned off. And I'm going to dip into this red, this burgundy, uh, not sorry, not burgundy, this violet. And I'm going to start coloring in my grapes. So right now, just going to color all these little circles in individually. And I'm doing it individually because I want to have those brush strokes and that circle going on. Just like we did up here, how we've got that kind of those brush strokes that, that are all circular. I want to do that with my grapes. It just makes them look so much nicer than just covering everything in. Um, in this violet.
to just do that and get all of those colored in. We'll add some shading after. Let it dry a little bit and then we'll add a little bit of shading. So right now, fill it. I'm just putting the charger on the phone. Keep on working on your grapes. <laughs> You can change the colors, do multiple colors on one vine. You have some dark purple grapes, some lighter grapes. Just have fun with it. Actually kind of reminds me of painting my nails for some reason. <laughs> Cannot explain it. In the same kind of pattern I use, I guess. Is everybody ready for vacation? I know I am. I don't get a vacation, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is a vacation. Nice. <laughs> I, yeah, I. it's funny. At a certain age, I guess I, I got to the point where I was like, I'm, I'm ready. I can't wait till I retire. I'm just going to take a bunch of art classes and you'll, you'll see me on campus every day, but I'm not going to be working. <laughs> right, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, I'm gonna take the, the, the pottery classes and take this. So that's, that's, that's what I'm planning when I'm retiring. Just be a lot of art class. Well, good for you. A lot of fun. And I just, I'm looking forward to some sleep. <laughs> yeah, I bet. It's, it's been, it's been a crazy one. I'm really excited to see how it turns out though. Mm 
And the best part about it is that I always get Thanksgiving dinner uh, ordered from uh, from John Brooks Deli. Huh? <laughs> because I'm usually like smack dab in the middle of something intense during this time. So I'm like, I'm, I'm not cooking. I am not cooking. And they do the whole shebang. Oh, do they? I did not know that. They do. Um, so I'm, I was going to give them a call today, but I was like, oh, I had too much going on. So I'm planning on calling them tomorrow and placing my order. Hopefully they, they're still doing it this year. They did it last year. So fingers crossed they're doing it again. Yeah, it's just, oof. That and a massage. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> and then right after NDI next week, we're going to have Barakutanga. And if you were around during Primero de Mayo, you know how awesome those guys are. Oh my gosh, they are incredible. Yeah, they, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go and see them. Oh yay! Yeah, I'm gonna come to the Macy Center and, and nice watch them. It's been so I, long since I've been to the Macy Center. Yeah. I, it has been. I'm, I think the last, has it? No, it wasn't Christmas. Was it the Christmas one that you came to us? No, it was before COVID, I think. Yeah, yeah, the, the Christmas before COVID. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's the last time I remember seeing you in the building. Oh. <laughs> so now that I have my grapes painted, I'm going to paint my top um, iron uh, ring, I guess you could call it. And I'm gonna use my tiny brush to fill in all these little areas between my grapes. So that way I don't ruin my grapes. You see all those little all the holes in between my circles got to get filled. Yeah, Barikotanga is going, you're going to love them. They are okay. so much fun. They sound like they're fun. They are. Oh, we were dancing in the parking lot over uh, during the middle of the Mayo. Everybody was dancing. <laughs> It's just so much fun. And they're from Albuquerque. Even better. Nice to see local talent. Yeah. Yeah. Be very careful around those grapes. Yep. Detail. Yes, this is definitely a detail job right here. And in between all your grapes, if you see any little squares, you can have light showing through, you can cover them up or you can leave them be. Because um, of course there is room in between your grapes 
We'll show a little bit of the background. I got like a little bit of light showing through that bunch of grapes right there. It's all in your perspective. It helps to like kind of step up, step back from your painting and look at it. Just kind of step away, get things from a different perspective, see what you like. Be something that you want to change. That'll give us a good opportunity to stretch a little bit. I know I get hunched when I start painting. So now that I've got a bigger part to fill in, um, I'm going to put my little brush down and grab my flat brush, my medium flat brush, just cause it, it'll make the job go a little bit faster. So once you get to a point where you're not doing so much detail and have to be so careful, you can switch out to a bigger brush. And just like we did on this side right here, I'm going to kind of bow this out a little bit, make it a little more swollen. It'll be a little swole. That way it looks like it's kind of holding things together. And I'm just gonna go over my bottom ring and cover up any parts where I kind of overlapped things. Again, posting with my pinky to keep my hand steady. It's going over that. Posting, put my pinky on there and just brushing across. A pinky helps keep you steady. Not say how, how helpful your pinky actually is when it comes to painting. Awesome. So far, so good. So now I want to hit all my leaves. And for that, we're going to move up a little bit. And if you see the image in the background here, we've got some, they, it's, almost, they, it's almost the same color as your background. Um, me personally, I wanna make them lighter um, and not just put some accent, you know, highlights in there. I actually want them to be a little more orange. So I'm gonna use my orange. And for that, I'm going to use my flat brush again. I'm a big fan of flat brush. I, 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 this is my favorite shape. It's the flat. So I'm going to take my yellow. My brush is dry, nice and dry. And I'm gonna take my, sorry, not my yellow, my orange, the orange that you got. Yeah. 
and I'm just going to color in my leaves. I'm gonna leave this one for last because I've got grapes going on in here and I don't wanna get any of this on my grapes. So I'm gonna start on the top one. And you see how that orange is different color? I, I don't know if you can tell, um, but it is a lighter color than my background. And me personally, that's what I want. If you don't want to do that and you want to keep those colors, go for it. I just want them to stand, I want my leaves to stand out from the background just a little bit. And this is all dry brush. I, I did not, I dried my brush off before I used it. So there was no water on it, just the paint. So I got that paint in there. And that is nice and light and it's a little bit different um, from my background. So now I'm gonna actually add some dark colors to it and some lighter colors to it, but I'm going to do it in a way that the strokes are gonna be different than the circular background stroke. So I'm gonna grab some red, not a lot, just a little, and I haven't cleaned my brush off and it's still dry. And I'm just going to kind of add some just little twishes here and there. Kind of give it a different feel. So you see it's got a little bit of like a shadow going on with the red. And so now I am gonna rinse my brush off, get that red off. Red is a very strong color, so I'll make sure you get it all off of your brush. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit of yellow. So I just tapped the tip of my brush into the yellow and then I'm going to tap it into the white. Okay, a little more white. So I covered the yellow with the white. And I'm just going to kind of stroke it, just like that. So we've got some different colors playing in there. I mean, picking up the colors from the sunset, but in a different pattern. So they're, they're just going straight this way much more than they are going around. I just wanted to differentiate those. You can keep going, get as intense as you want. Put that black up if you feel like it. And then I'm gonna go over and do this one. So I'm gonna do this one. I think I'm going to use red as the base and then add the yellow and the orange and the white on top of that. Just for, just for a little difference, a little change, a little contrast. So I'm gonna grab some red. And I'm gonna start out light 
on the red, just because red, like I keep saying, red is a strong color. A little bit of red goes a very long way. Yeah, that one's a little darker. <laughs> yeah. You see how that's a little more intense right there? It's a little darker. Now I'm going to get my orange. Still dry brush. I'm just going to kind of add some little slashes in there. Just kind of following the pattern of my leaf. And I'll add a little bit of white. I'm not going to add that much white to this one just because it's kind of in shadow. There you go. All right, so on this one, I'm going to go yellow just because I've got the burgundy grapes right here. I, I want this to kind of be intense back here. So I'm going yellow on the background on that one. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep as far away from my grapes as I can for the time being, because I'm using this brush. Looking at all the big spots that I can reach. <laughs> and then I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to get my smaller brush and go in with yellow in between these. So that way I don't end up messing anything up. <laughs> and again, my brush is dry, so it's just, <coughs> just going in dry brush. And I'm not getting I'm I'm not getting too crazy with the color and making it super super opaque. Um, just kind of letting that background still come through, and it's it's a little transparent, so you still you could still see the background and some of my leaves, 
but and giving it a little bit more contrast to the background. And I'm going to go a little red on here, kind of close to the bottom. And for this, I'm actually going to use my finger in between just because I'm using a smaller brush. And I want those lines to be a little softer and it's a little hard to kind of soften out lines with these little tiny little precision brushes. You can also use a little bit of water. It gives it a little bit different, a little bit shading. And then I'm going to use some white for highlights. And this one definitely has the standout highlights here. I'm really not going to um, soften those lines. I want I want these white lines. Actually, I can do that. I can go a little bit darker too. I guess it's not darker. I should say more fake. So you can go back like I'm doing. And as I said, standing back from your painting actually helps give you a much better perspective. So if you get a moment and find a stopping point, kind of take a step back, take a look at, at what you've got. Um, I'm doing that as I look at the screen, I can kind of gauge, okay, I, I, maybe I could use a highlight right here and maybe you know a little bit darker right here. Um, yeah. And since I have some white on my brush right now, I'm actually gonna come up here to my little curly cue and just kind of follow it a little bit with the white, give it a little bit of dimension. Then just kind of following those C's and just gives it a little, just a little bit more dimension to it. And I'll do that with the rest of my curly cues as well. I'm just going backwards C. Just like that. Nothing too intense. So like I'm just going halfway and halfway. And you see how it kind of gives that highlight. All right, and we still have white on our brush, so let's add our rivets. We'll put the white base down first, and then we'll add a little bit of dark to it. So, um, three, but by six. Let's see how many we can get in here. We want to just make white circles. One. And however many you want, I'm trying to gauge. I want them a little bit of ways and I want them a little even. So I'm using my pinky. So versatile. <laughs> As a gauge, uh, kind of measuring it out. I don't want to be precise. I want it to look natural. So, oh. I'm gonna put a couple on top too. Okay. 
because these ones will be a little bit smaller. So I got some nice rivets going on there. And I'm going to get a tiny bit of white. And a, even just a, barely tip my brush into the black and mix those two together and make a nice light gray. So I'm going to make a nice light gray. Let's see. I'm just going to outline one side of my circle. So you can pick whichever side you want. I'm just making like a backward C around my white circle. And if you're like, well, my white circle's kind of like, you can barely see my white circle. Don't worry, we're gonna go back with it and make it a darker. The white on the black takes a couple, a couple of coats. So right now we're just letting the white kind of dry. This gray will be like a little shadow. And since I have the gray on my brush right now, I'm actually going to kind of pinch my bristles together so they fan out a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of brush through. Can I do like a little brush through? And give my metal a little sheen, if you will. you can wet it like I've got that right there that's a little too intense for me so I'm going to wet it and kind of smush that apart <clears throat> yeah, allergies. So not allergies. No. Change of season. Yep. I feel that. Everybody starts using their wood burning stoves and fireplaces. Yep. The air just gets so dry. So you see, I got a little bit of pattern here going on. If you could see that. A little bit of gray highlight in the in the metal right there. <laughs> Put it through your grapes if you're bold. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go one more time over these rivets with some white just to get those really opaque and cover that black. You don't have to. You can leave them kind of translucent. Up to you, but I want mine to stand out a little bit. Oh. 
So next thing we're going to do is put some highlights, just like we just did with these and our leaves. We're going to add a little bit of highlights to our grapes. So if you did burgundy grapes like mine, um, I'm going to make a light pink by mixing a little bit of red and some white together. <laughs> um, it's made, you know, make a complementary color in the same I got a little bit of red. So we've got a little bit of pink going on here. And I'm just going to highlight one side a little bit on all of my grapes. Oh, the little yeah, that's a good idea. I'm <laughs> not picking it up that good on the screen. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, you can see, you can see it a little bit right here. So it's not that intense because I'm I'm going to go over this white again. Um, but I just want to have a little bit of a highlight area that. The sun is touching. I'm just doing that all on one side. So it's just all on one side. So all my grapes, all this side of my grapes are going to have a little bit of that pink on them. That's kind of the side that's facing the sun. So you can kind of see it on screen. <laughs> oh, lighting, gotta love it. So now I'm gonna go even lighter and add a white. I'm not gonna clean my brush. Um, I've got that pink on there. I'm just gonna go with it. So I'll have like a pinky white going on here. And I'm just going to kind of like stroke my brush through here and make these little C patterns. That. So you can go darker, you can, you can go more intense, you can lighten up a little bit. Like these top grapes, they're going to definitely get a lot of the sun. Some of these, not so much. You see what I'm doing there? And then also, if you have, if you still have some of that dark burgundy color, you can grab that or, or red or whatever color you decide to make your grapes on. You can grab that, add a little bit of black to it and just make it a little bit darker. And we can do like a shadow wash on the underside of our grapes, like where the grapes are kind of not hitting the sun. So the opposite side of where you put your white and add a little bit of darker kind of burgundy or red or 
or green or whatever color your grapes are. We're just create, creating dimension. There you go. light side and the dark side. How's it looking? You guys happy so far so good? <laughs> All right, so once you get happy with your, your grapes, like I said, go ahead and kind of step away for a little bit, take a look at it. You know, we're right here this whole time, but nobody's going to stand, I, well, some people might, but you know, nobody's going to stand that close to your picture. So if you step away a little bit and kind of get it, you can eye that perspective and see what's working for you, what's not working for you, what you might want to add a little bit more to. So like, I'm looking at this in the screen and I actually could go even crazier on my little curly cues because I just love that. I, I, I love curly cues, they're just so cute. It might be a little, a little pigtail. Um, next, we're gonna do our water and our water can be nice and simple. So I'm going to take my brush and it's going to have, it's going to be wet, wet right now. And I'm grabbing a little bit of yellow and I'm grabbing a little bit of red. Not so much to make orange, but to kind of mix them together to get multiple colors on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of make waves right here in my little water area. So I'm gonna start right here at my horizon and then kind of just pull it down and up, pull it down and up. I'm just making kind of like a lazy S pattern right here. And what color are you using, Dana? So I am, I am mixing, I have multiple colors on my brush right now. I've got some yellow on there on one side and I've got some red on the other. Okay. So that way when I lay them down, I get that kind of that that mix of color. They're uh, so that way they're mixing instantly as I put them on the canvas. Turn it this way a little bit. There we go. You see that? So, and you can you can get whatever colors you want to do, put put in your water. Got some red going on. So they're mixing on my brush to make this kind of light yellow, um, light orange actually. And so now that I got toward the bottom, I'm just going to kind of add little lines. It's really dark down here. Dip my brush in the water a little bit and kind of break these lines up.
So you've got your sun kind of shining on that water right there. And I just, I, I put some yellow on there and then I'm just wetting my brush and letting the water kind of break up that, that color, break up those lines and just spread them out. And I think, I think I want my horizon a little more defined. So I'm actually going to grab a little bit of brown and just kind of, kind of go across and line it out. I mean, you can even, you can go super bright on that horizon, add some, some white, you know, play with it until it, until it turns into something that you like. And I think I really, really like having the yellow in there, really intense. I'm going to add a little more yellow because I don't know, it just really feels bright and happy. And I love that. Looking good. All right, and that is pretty much done. So that's it. That is our painting. Um, you can keep going and you can, you know, add like, you know, like I said, I'm going to add more curly cues to this because I love curly cues. Um, so whatever you want, you want more leaves, add more leaves, have some fun. Um, the painting never has to be done. Like it really never has to be done. You can just keep going and going and going and adding and adding, you know, um, you could, you could add a deck here or a table and put a wine glass. Like I said, I have wine on the mind, but <laughs> um, I, I hope you guys had fun and I'd love to see yours if, if you've got them close to done. Oh yeah, oh yeah, nice. I love that. That's fun. Thank you, Charlotte. Ooh. Oh, I love oh, your that looks good. Oh, so, so dramatic. Oh. <laughs> that is gorgeous. I like that dark red background. That's so cool. Anybody else? No, <laughs> but I might might put a dock in there. Yeah. Yeah. I think a dock would look really good right there. I think it'd be fun. Hi, Magdalene. Hey. Oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. We had a crowd. Yeah, okay. So here's mine. Nice. Oh. Nice. I love Jack. Still working on the ocean. Um, so oh. it's gonna have to be coming back to that. <laughs> oh, that it looks so good. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh nice. I love yours. I love it. it. It looks purple from from my perspective, and purple as you guys can pretty much tell is my favorite color. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, no, that's nice. Awesome. Good job, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys oh gosh i i'm so glad you guys joined me tonight this is so much fun and i needed some grown-up time <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i will see you guys uh later i hope you guys have a good night and um look out for the december one i've I've got, oh my God, I've got the cutest idea. Uh, we're going to have some fun. Um, it's going to be very, very whimsical. <laughs> so, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys later. Okay. Happy have Thanksgiving. Good, yes. Bye. Have a good holiday. Enjoy yes. your time. All right.